give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. The Bible says, don't even say it in the corner of your chamber. Is that because the beds of the air will carry it and take it to the king? There are angels attending to you all the time. At the beginning of this year, I told our people, I said, we need to put a lot of money into our media. We're going to do a lot of media stuff. We're going on TV. We used to be on TV 2005, 2006. I said, now, we're going back on TV. We need to invest. So we, we had some multi-million things to do on our media so we can have good TV production. Three, two weeks ago, one of our staffs called me, Pastor. One of our church members called and said, uh, there is a program on DSTV they do during festival time. There's a powerful pastor in town, which all of us know. He's the only one they used to call to occupy that space for free. DSTV for free. They would give it to him every... And she just joined our church, and she walked into our guy and said, you need to listen to my pastor. You need to give us a slot. And they said, we should bring our own video. Wow. She didn't know what I said to my staffs in the office. Be careful what you say. If you don't want to see it, don't say it. Don't say it. Please, be careful what you say. My immediate younger sister, when we were growing up, she would cut pictures of beautiful pictures of homes in magazines. She likes America. She likes anything in America. She cut pictures. She keeps them as a little girl. She would say, this is how my house looks like, this is how my car would. No, she cuts pictures of family on, on, on American magazines. When it's time to get married, she got married to a man who has lived in America for five years. Today she's an American, she's a citizen, she has her children and her family there. Be careful the things you say. If you don't want to see it, I beg you, don't say it. If your marriage is going through difficult times, don't say this marriage is ending. Don't even say it to threaten your partner. Don't say it if you don't like it to say it. Because the moment you say it, everyone can stamp it. Don't say I'm saying it so that I can get him afraid. Don't say it, please. Stop saying it. Get, say other things to make him afraid, not that one. Say, oh, woman, you are leaving this house. If you don't want her to leave the house, don't say it. Because they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, the word they testify. Ask your neighbor, what word are you testifying? What word do you say habitually? That's what it means. So testimony is a formal statement that someone make about what he or she saw or know of a situation under oath. So to testify means to bear witness. To testify means what? To bear witness. Say yes, it's true. It's true. To testify means to give evidence. Every time you testify, you are giving what? Evidence. By stripes I'm healed. Every time you say it, you are giving evidence to that statement. You are bearing witness of that statement. You are saying, that statement is true. That's what you are saying. Every time you say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, Philippians 4.13, you are saying that statement is true over your life. Every time you say, by stripes I'm healed, you are giving evidence to that statement in your health. Every time you say, with long life and prosperity will satisfy me, you are giving evidence to that promise. You are giving strength. You are saying, I believe it. It is true. Every time we confess God's word with unwavering faith, we are saying we believe that particular word of God is true. That word is true. I must say that word is true. We are bearing witness to the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this statement I want to make, if you have not heard anything from me this morning, please hear this one. Whether you are on the ground floor, outside the overflow, in the gallery, watching online, 
Stop bearing witness to lies over your life. Every time you say, I'm broke, you are bearing witness to what Satan is saying. Every time you say, I'm sick, he said, let none of the inhabitants of Zion say I'm sick. You are bearing witness to what Satan is doing and saying. Every time you open your mouth, you are bearing witness, either to what Satan is saying or to what God is saying. We're always bearing witness every time we open our mouth. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. You are bearing witness that that word is true, that you are the head and you are not the tail. You know why God is helping our church? You will never hear dirty statements from our mouth. Even in the most difficult time, you will never hear bad words coming from our mouth. Even when things are not working, you will never hear things are not working. When we raise offering for a project, the money is not enough. We won't come back and say it's not enough. We just, we just keep believing God. The problem many of us have is that you are vomiting poison every day over your life. You are bearing witnesses to lies. You are bearing witnesses to causes. You are bearing witnesses to satanic corporations. Stop bearing witness to Satan. Start bearing witness to the light. You are the light of this world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going somewhere. We're going to get there soon. So, in Hebrews 12, 24, I want us to have Hebrews 12, 24 on the screen. Hebrews 12, 24. Now, he said, every time we come to church, we have come to Jesus. You can read it from the beginning later when you get up. He said, to Jesus, the what? What, what is Jesus? The mediator of the new covenant. Is that not interesting? That we have somebody beside the Father who is mediating for me. Like an insider who is saying, Father, bless him. It's February ending. This is the last day in February. Bless him. It's like you have somebody in Asu Rock who is tapping Buari and say, Oga, Oga Buari, don't forget James Lawa. You have two more years. Don't forget James Lawa. James Lawa is an engineer. Give him construction contracts. Oga, you know, Oga is busy, so he's always saying, Oga, don't forget James Lawa. The Bible says, Jesus is our mediator. We have him there as a mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of what? What does that blood do? That blood speaks what? Better things than what? Ever say the blood speaks. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel speaks vengeance. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy and grace. The blood of Abel is speaking, oh, the soul that sinner shall die. The blood of Jesus is saying, Lord, have mercy. I'm so glad that I'm under the covering of the blood of Jesus. So even when I, even when I, when I go A-wire, the blood of Jesus is still speaking on my behalf and say, Lord, have mercy on me. That is, God, have mercy on Tundi Adioye. And the blood is not just speaking. The Bible says the blood speaks. That's present continuous tense. It's always speaking. Even when I'm sleeping, the blood is speaking. Mercy for Tunde Adioye. Mercy. Even when the enemy run around to say, we are killing him, we are destroying him, we are doing this, and he doesn't even know anything, the blood is speaking. Say, Lord, cover him. The Bible says, we have come to the sprinkling of the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Why is he better? The blood of Abel speaks vengeance. This blood speaks what? Mercy. Everybody say mercy. mercy. Shout mercy. mercy. Say grace. So the blood is shouting mercy, grace. Let me tell you where out the blood works. Because the blood is speaking all the time, mercy, grace. If I open my own mouth too and speak mercy, grace, what will happen? What will happen? Mercy, grace will happen. That's what will happen. The blood is speaking mercy, grace on my behalf. If I too can join the blood to see mercy, grace, grace will happen. Mercy will happen. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth, 
but that word that can minister grace to the hearer. Words that are seasoned with grace. Grace-filled words. Faith-filled words. Please make up your mind. I will never say anything that doesn't have faith and grace. Faith-filled words. Grace-filled words. Even when you are hungry and things are turning upside down, you look around and say, I know my Redeemer live it. You know, people open their mouth and speak negative things because they feel that they are facing negative situation. So they say, well, I cannot help it. It's so glaring. I don't want to... I, 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 I tell the truth so that the devil can be a liar. And the Bible says, let the weak say what? Let the poor say, I'm rich. So you, you have the permission to speak what the blood speaks. I know you know that the blood is not speaking vengeance. I know you know the blood is not speaking poverty. I know you know the blood is not speaking evil over your life. Because God cannot contradict itself. The blood is saying what the word is saying. The blood of who? Jesus. The words of who? Jesus. They can't be speaking two different things. So as the blood speaks, the, what the word has already said, if you can join them to say it, watch it. What is in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 13, 1 will happen. Out of two or three witness, if they bring witness against you in law court and they become two or three, you are in trouble. So the Bible says out of two or three witness, every word shall be what? Second or 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. So, the blood is speaking what the word of God is saying. You two, you are saying what the two of them are saying. We now have how many witnesses? How many witnesses now? Three. Three witnesses. The blood, the word, you join, making the third one. The moment that we have three witnesses, the Bible says every word will be established. I don't know if somebody is getting what I'm talking about. 21 years. Medical science says no child. The blood says there's child. The word says there's child. The man too that is involved is saying there's child. The two of them came into agreement. And every word has been, once there are two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, the, everything is contrary to being blessed because your great grandfather is so poor, your grandfather is so poor, your father too is so poor. Nobody is blessed around you. But you kept declaring, the Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You too know that that's what the word of God is saying. And that's what the blood is saying. And you have joined them to say it. And we now have two or three witnesses. There is no how you can escape prosperity. Ask these men. They have been with me for a long time. That is the secret. Nothing but that. Are you hearing me? The blood is saying what the word is saying, and I join the two of them to say what they are saying. What can stop the two or three witness over your life? Situation and circumstances are saying negative things. The blood will not say negative things. The blood will only say what the word is saying. And if I join the two of them to say what they are saying, the devil is in trouble. And that's what we have come here to do this morning. All we have come to say is mercy, grace. And as we join the blood and the word to say mercy and grace, doors you have knocked that didn't open will be open today. The things you are not qualified to handle by grace and mercy, you will handle them. It is so difficult for a wombless woman to carry a child. Your womb was removed. But the truth is this. When the blood is saying something and the word is saying the same thing and you join them to say fruitfulness, there is nothing that can stop it. The Bible says the law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of spirit and death. The law of sin and death. I prophesy to someone here, as you continue to speak what the blood says, there shall be agreement in the spirit. Power, power will be released. In this gathering to this morning, power will be released. God will make a way where it seems there is no way. He will make a river in the desert. Shout the blood. Please sit down briefly. I'm going to round off. My time is gone. I know I'm supposed to stop very soon. But listen to me. It's not just the blood, but the word of our testimony. What's your word of testimony? Is your word aligned with the word that is coming from the blood? Or is your word contradicting what the blood is saying? The blood is speaking on your behalf. He's saying, there shall be a way where there is no way. Are you saying, ah, I don't even know this in my life. 
Ile aye mi kokote wa aye mi mo. You know, this is my life. I don't even know this is my life. You know, some people, if you hear them talk outside church, you'll be shocked. You'll be asking yourself that, are we in the same church? Oh, please, forget about this Sunday carriage. We all have it. We all have this Sunday carriage. There's a way we walk on Sunday. Sunday is a holy day. Forget about the Sunday carriage. Monday to Friday, what do you say? Because the blood is speaking on Monday too. The blood doesn't know whether it's Monday or it's Tuesday. It's 24 7. Are you saying what the blood? If they wake you up in the middle of the night, are you going to say, Edgar, what are you going to say? If you dream, they are running after you. They are running after you. And you suddenly woke up. What are you going to say? The blood. Now, it wants, every time you say what the blood is saying, three witnesses are already formed. And in the law court, once you have three witnesses, the word is established. 